Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial for Stay Close To Me. As I feature my patrons on the credit roll, I'm just going to add a few quick words to the tutorial. As most of you are aware, or at least the people who are following the channel, I recently became a father and no, I am still not sleeping. That is probably apparent throughout the tutorial itself. I'm very sorry about the low energy vibe this sometimes gives, but it's either doing these tutorials on very little sleep or not doing them at all. Luckily, Stay Close To Me wasn't that difficult to pull off. It's one of Tommy's easier songs, built around lots of open chords, but it still features a great melody and a few really neat technical tricks to get your fingers around. Everything is explained in the video in full. Okay, so let's get to work. All you need is an acoustic guitar in standard tuning. No thumb pick, no flat pick, nothing. Tommy does play this song with a capo on the second fret, but for this tutorial I'm going to leave that out so that what you read in the tablature exactly matches what you should play on the guitar so you don't have to count up two extra frets all the way through the tutorial. Once you are done, once you can play the song the whole way through, then it shouldn't be too difficult to just slap on the capo on the second fret and move everything up two frets. Normally I would now say we're going to start with the intro, but there is no intro. However, in his recent version that Tommy uploaded on YouTube, he changes the verse around just a little bit so that it sounds like an intro. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play through the whole verse, I'm going to explain the whole verse, and then I'm going to add a little bit of explanation afterwards how you can change this as to make it sound uh, like an intro. But first off, through the whole verse. Keep it at that right for this moment. So we're starting out with an open A sus2 chord. We're playing the bass note and the top note at the same time, arpeggiating the next two notes, so second fret with the index finger, second fret with the middle finger on the D string and G string. And then for those open strings on top, we're just going to strum softly upward with the thumb. We're going to continue the same arpeggio and now what is really important is that you keep these last three notes ringing out as you transfer to the next chord. Adding in the thumb over the side of the neck and adding in the pinky at the fourth fret. Right away this is the make or break chord. In this song, all the other chord forcings are easier than this one, but this will probably cause some trouble for some people. So thumb over the side of the neck, pinky fourth fret, index finger second fret on the D string, middle finger second fret on the G string, and you still need to be able to play those two open strings. The rest is exactly the same. Top note keeps ringing out from the previous bar, arpeggio, and a soft upstrum with the thumb. So the only thing basically that changes is the bass note. Now this chord is a difficult one. What can you do, and Tommy actually does this himself a few times if you watch him play all the way through this song, is not play that fourth fret on the A string. This is what it sounds like in the original version. Now if you leave out that fourth fret on the A string and you play the exact same arpeggio as you did on the first bar on the A chord, then it sounds like this. Almost sounds identical, you're only missing out on that one C-sharp 4th fret on the A string, but you can't leave it out and just play the same arpeggio two times without sacrificing too much of the original. 
If you know that this is a possibility, then those of you who dread using the thumb over the side of the neck can actually leave out the thumb as well. Then you need to adjust your fingering of the A chord just a little bit by using, for instance, the middle finger and the ring finger. And use the index finger. That way you can leave the A chord down as we did using the index finger, middle finger and the thumb over the side of the neck. If you want to use the index finger for that F sharp bass note, then you will need to start out with the middle finger and the ring finger. That was the hardest chord. Everything else that follows now is easier. So I'm going throughout the tutorial, I'm going to uh, switch between using the F chord with the pinky and the F chord without the pinky, sorry, the F sharp uh, chord without the pinky. And that way you will hear that the difference isn't that uh, apparent if you play through the song. One more time, those two bars and then on to the third bar. Moving to a B minor chord, using the pinky on the third fret, which might seem a bit strange, but if you count in the transfer to the next chord, this is actually the most logical way to play it. Tommy slides down to the second fret with the pinky still on the B string, straight back up with the pinky to the third fret and adding in the ring finger on the third fret on the G string as well. And that way you are in perfect position to transfer to the next chord, which is an F sharp dominant seventh chord with a raised fifth. And again, two soft strums with the thumb, this time both down and up. Really quick melodic fill. recommend hammering on with a pinky and again if you use the pinky in this way you're in perfect position to transfer to the next chord which is a B dominant chord or even a B dominant ninth chord that's already the next bar so you're working around a B dominant ninth chord voicing with a lot of hammering on and pulling off with the pinky. If this is awkward or difficult in the beginning, then you can leave out those hammer-ons and just play the melody. So that's the exact same thing. All I'm doing now is I'm leaving out the note from which the hammer-ons or pull-offs are starting and I'm going straight for the target note. Again, with all those quick hammer-ons and pull-offs, so a quick hammer-on to the second fret. One of those really quick pull-offs to the open string. And again, one of those quick hammer-ons back to the second fret. Back to back. One extra word, if you're looking uh, or if you watch the uh, original Tommy recording or the one he recently uploaded on YouTube, you'll see that Tommy doesn't switch with the middle finger from the uh, A string to the low E string, switching from that low B to that low F sharp. Tommy yet again does this really uh, awkward thing that I've only, I've only seen him doing this. He pushes down the two strings with one finger. So you see him finger what looks like only the B note on the A string, but he's actually pushing down two strings with the middle finger at the same time without using a bar, just pressing straight down. I'm not capable of doing that. So what I have to do and what most of you probably will have to do is switch from the A string to the E string. E string and then to the next chord which is an E chord starting out on an E sus4 chord resolving to a regular E chord and then Tommy plays a little hammer on a pull off fill on top index finger hammering on to the third fret 
pulling back off to the uh, second fret, pulling off to an open string. And then Tommy uses a li neat little trick to make the transfer to the next chord as fluent as possible. He's playing an open E and then he's going to play a fretted E on the fifth fret on the B string right after that. And in that way, the pinky is already on the fifth fret, which makes the transfer yet again to the next chord as easy as possible. So you're basically keeping that pinky on the fifth fret B string all the way through that last part down, as well as a little bar across the second fret on the uh, D string, G string and B string. And for the second chord, you will actually have to extend that bar to the A string as well. But the really important part is open E string, fretted E note, keep that ringing out as you're playing the bass note for the next chord. To B sus4, B dominant sus4, sorry. Hammering on to an A chord with a C sharp in the bass. And to a D sus2 chord. Back to back. And then to transfer into the next verse, Tommy pulls the reverse trick. He's playing the bar across the high E string now as well. F sharp, then to a fretted E note on the fifth fret. Try to keep those uh, ringing out, so overlapping each other. And then after playing that fretted E on the fifth fret, you're going to play an open E string, the reverse technique as we used before, to head back into the first chord of the verse. So the first time around, we use an open E string to a fretted note to end up in the arpeggio section and then we're using the exact opposite fretted note open E string to end up back in the first chord of the verse very simple in terms of, of how it works but it's b uh, executed brilliantly by Tommy and it really helps to bind this whole song together so that was basically almost the whole verse. The second time around, only the ending changes a little bit. So I'm going to play this through one time really slowly. Then we're going to take a look at the second part. of the verse. I uh, changed one little thing there during that uh, playthrough. I actually used my ring finger to hammer on to that chord instead of the pinky. You can change it around as well, but I would recommend using the fingering Tommy does, which is hammering on with the pinky and keeping down the rest of the chord right away. Anyway, on to the second verse. The first part is exactly the same. You can change a few of the fills. There is one fill on the second chord, the F sharp minor chord that I'm going to show you in particular. And apart from that, only the very last few bars are different. Here we go. I'm going to play through it one time. into the chorus. Now, just a few little changes in comparison to the first verse. That is most apparent is that second uh, bar fill. The 
those of you with very keen eyes probably noticed right away that I'm changing one thing starting from that A chord is I'm swapping around the finger. So instead of using index finger, middle finger, I'm actually changing strings. I'm putting the middle finger on the D string and the index finger on the G string. For the rest, I'm just playing that first bar exactly the same as I would do the first time around. Then I'm adding in the thumb over the side of the neck on the second fret and I'm just moving the index finger to the first fret and straight back up to the second fret. Really simple fill going from an F sharp minor ninth chord back to a minor seventh chord, but it really pops out when you play through the, through the song. If you don't like how this sounds, then you can just play the thing you did in the very first verse. Then no need to add in this film. I think it sounds really nice if you listen or look at his latest version on YouTube. He actually puts this one in every time he repeats the verse the second time around. I really like it. If you like it too, put it in. If you don't like it, just play what you did the first time. Everything else is largely the same. Just a simpler fill without, we're just leaving out that open E string. Up until that point, everything else is the same. And then uh, arpeggio, you should let ring out as much as possible. So open E string, second fret with the index finger on the B string. Pinky, 4th fret on the G string, then an open A bass string and then adding in the middle finger on the 3rd fret on the D string, which gives you an A uh, chord, or I think it is meant as an A dominant chord with a raised 5th. You're not playing uh, the 7th degree, but you are playing the 9th degree. Switching around to middle finger stays where it was, index finger on the second fret of the G string. Tommy plays an up and a down strum. And then straight after that last down strum, again a strum down, so this will have to happen a little bit faster, moving to an A sus2 chord, the same chord you played in the beginning. That is the full verse. Let me play that second verse really slowly, then we're moving on to the chorus. But you're almost done with this song. The chorus isn't that difficult, it's the only part that is left. Here we go. So, uh, the repeat of the verse a little bit slower. Now, before we cover the chorus, I first want to uh, put a little bit of attention to what I told earlier. There is no intro to this song, but Tommy actually sort of transforms the verse in his latest version on YouTube so that it sounds like a chorus. So what does he do? He starts out in the exact same way, but in the first two bars he's only playing one bass note. So up until now you always played a bass note on the first beat and on the third beat. If he plays this as an intro, he actually does it rather in a sort of a free time uh, sense of timing and he doesn't play that second bass note. And he just waits and then... And again, a pause. And everything is played sort of rubato, free time. Picks up the timing in this part. And then he 
he's off for the rest of the chorus. Um, so that's what he does. He, he just stretches out the timing on the intro just a little bit, leaves out a few bass notes, and that's uh, how he actually makes the verse sound like an intro. You can play it however you like. Tommy used to play this just straight up into the verse, no differences whatsoever, but I really liked the sound of that intro, so that's what I put into the teaser as well, and that's why I'm explaining it at the moment as well. Uh, I realized that I already played a few extra fills here and there, I'm going to cover this in the next verse. First, let's have a look at the chorus. into the next verse. Let's have a look at that chorus. We're starting out with an E over D uh, chord voicing. So we're playing an E voicing. We're just using a, a little triad uh, or a little third to start out on top. Index finger, fourth fret on the high E string. Middle finger, fifth fret on the B string. Moving that index finger to the fifth fret, adding in the pinky on the seventh fret, not the ring finger, because we're moving that voicing up two more frets, and that's when we ha have to add in the ring finger on the ninth fret on the G string. You can slide it up, a slide as well, a little embellishment. Open the E string, ninth fret G string, and then a quick downward strum for a little percussive effect. back to the open D string and then a quick slide back up to the 7th fret. In the tablature it's written sliding from the 5th fret to the 7th fret. You can also slide from the 6th fret to the 7th fret. It's a little less distance to cover and it sounds just as good. Dropping down that voicing 2 frets to a D triad and then to an E triad, like a D chord, but only on the 4th fret, still with an open D string. Up and down strum. And then to an F sharp minor 7th chord. One of those dreaded Tommy Emmanuel fills, so you're starting out easy enough. Pinky on the 5th fret on the high E string with an F sharp bar chord, minor 7 bar chord underneath, so a full bar across the 2nd fret, ring finger 4th fret on the uh, low A string and then the pinky 5th fret on the high E string. That's all easy enough, so... That's a really top, typical Tommy Emmanuel fill. So hammering on from the bar at the second fret with the pinky to the fourth fret, sliding up and sliding straight back down again. Tommy uses loads of these types of fills, but it does put a bit of a strain on the pinky. Sliding to the fifth fret with the middle finger, really important. If that fill is difficult, then you can just play a G-sharp instead. So just move the pinky down to the 4th fret. But try and put some effort in, into that fill, because it's something, if you like Tommy Emmanuel style, it's something that you will be needing a lot. Sneaky voicing once again, a little bar across the 4th fret, you only need the A string and the G string, adding in the ring finger on the 6th uh, fret on the D string and the middle finger 5th fret on the B string and then you need an open E string as well, so you have to lift up that bar to make sure that you get the A string and the G string but not the high E string. And the, the sole reason you're lifting up that bar is to get that, that harping sound across that descending arpeggio. 
can play this in a traditional manner using ring finger, middle finger, index finger, index finger, thumb. Tommy actually plays this mostly with the index finger. He's pulling down in, in the upper direction. And he's only using the, the middle finger, thumb, thumb, and then middle finger, index finger, index finger, index finger, thumb. I'm gonna try and do that really slowly, so. One more time. One more time, a bit more up to speed. I often play it without thinking about it in the more traditional manner using the ring finger and the middle finger as well. But this is how Tommy does it. Then keeping down that bar, hammering on with the pinky on the G string to the sixth fret, so fourth fret, sixth fret, to the middle finger already on the fifth fret, pinky to the seventh fret on the B string, and then we're adding in a G sharp minor seventh chord, exactly the same fingering as we used a few bars before on that F sharp minor chord, only now we're not using the pinky on the high E string, but on the B string. Uh, Tommy, this is the most technical, challenging part, he uses again one of those unorthodox uh, arpeggiating manners, this is what he does. that so it's a full arpeggio across the whole chord using mostly the thumb and the index finger so you're playing middle finger to plug that high uh, F sharp note on the seventh fret adding in the bar across uh, six strings and then it's all thumb going downward again the middle finger on the B string seventh fret and then index finger, index finger going down. Three, four. Back to the thumb. One time the index finger on the G string and then all back to the thumb going upward. So really slowly. Three and four and. It feels really strange in the beginning. I've never played something like this in, in terms of technique, but it's really efficient. Tommy's actually just leaning down the thumb, strumming or, or plucking all those strings with one single movement. So you're not supposed to play each string with a, a separate joint movement from the thumb. This is basically just leaning down across those strings onto the next note to play with either the middle finger or the index finger. As you can see, the thumb is just leaning across the strings, just pushing through those rest strokes. Really slowly. Middle finger, thumb. Middle finger, index finger, index finger, thumb. Back to the index finger on the G string and a strum one downward movement with the thumb again, going from the A string all the way to the G string, middle finger on the B string, moving the chord up two frets and doing the exact same thing, thumb, middle finger, index finger, index finger, thumb, index finger, and back those three downward uh, strums or, or that downward movement across three strings. If you do this slowly, it looks as if the, the thumb is doing uh, separate movements. If you speed it up, you really have to make sure that this is this feels like just dragging the thumb across the strings and not making a, a single joint movement each time you switch from string, string, string to string. Jesus, string to string. So not one, two, three. So not all separate movements, but just one. 
one strum going down. It's actually the, the thumb is locked in position and it's more of an arm movement than a thumb movement. Middle finger and moving up two frets and playing the exact same thing. So, and once you get to speed it up, once you get to lock in that single movement, that's when it should all start to click. Up one more fret, we're ending up on the seventh fret now with the bar, but we're closing down the chorus. Hammering on to the 9th fret, 10th fret all with the pinky, and then sliding a 6th interval from the 10th fret up to the 12th fret. We're ending up in a little melody in thirds now. So from 10th fret overlapping on the 9th fret the index finger, don't leave or, or don't mute these other strings, keep everything ringing across as much as possible. To the ring finger on the 11th fret D string, middle finger 10th fret on the B string. Pinky 12th fret on the high E string and a little bar across the 9th fret. little harmonic on the 12th fret, hammering on to 10th fret, 11th fret, removing those fingers again, and then a little D triad, just a little bar across the D, G and B strings to end back up in the verse. Let me play that last bit back to back. the whole chorus. Now let me play the chorus one time through all the way really slowly and we're going to have a look at the rest of the song but there isn't really that much left. Here we go. full chorus. Now on to the next verse. There was one little fill I forgot to explain in the first verse. I'm going to do that right away. fill is just on the A chord, hammering on from the open E string to the 2nd fret, hammering on from the open B string to the 2nd fret and back to an open E string. Using the fingering with the middle finger on top, index finger down below, 
when, whenever you want to add in this fill, you can also do it in the first part of the verse. You always use the ring finger for both hammer-ons. So this is with the fingering of the uh, first time around. This is with the fingering the second time around, so just swapping around the middle finger uh, and the index finger. And then the rest of the chorus is the same, uh, sorry, the rest of the verse is the same as we already saw. So all we have left now is one chorus and one last verse and then it's straight into the ending. to the last verse with one extra surprise fill. I'm going to stop right away when we arrive there. wasn't expecting that, neither was I the first time when I heard Tommy play that. A bend going from the 4th fret to the 5th fret on the high E string, releasing to the 4th fret and then straight back into the rest of the song. One more time with the A chord in front. Simple but effective. And now we're approaching the ending. So we are starting the ending with the same downward arpeggio, but instead of adding the middle finger on the 3rd fret on the D string, we are now adding the middle finger on the 3rd fret on the low E string, resolving to the 2nd fret. Using that open B string to transfer to the next chord. Sort of an F chord, but without a bar. First fret, index finger on the low E string. Third fret, ring finger on the A string. Open the E string, middle finger, second fret on the G string. And then you will need an open B and E string as well. Make sure that open B string rings out as you switch chords. down the ring finger and the middle finger. This gives you an E sus4 chord with a raised fifth. Moving down to just a regular E chord. Three, four. Into the next bar, let me play those first few bars back to back. Hammering on, open E string, 2nd fret, 4th fret, little bar across the 2nd fret, pinky on the high E string, 5th fret, moving to a B minor 7th chord. What is important is again you keep that top note ringing out as you're changing from that A chord 
to that B minor 7th chord. Open E string and then a little single note run, two harmonics on the 12th fret on the E string and A string and then sort of a harp voicing, pinky 9th fret on the D string, middle finger 7th fret on the G string index finger, 5th fret on the B string, and you're meant to play all of these notes overlapping, so let them ring across each other. This is of course a little bit easier with the capo on the 2nd fret, so you get to move it all up 2 frets. With the harmonics. If you do this right, then by the end of the run you have all 6 strings ringing out across each other. So E string, A string, D, G, B, and E string. Pinky to the 7th fret, then sliding a 6th from the 9th fret, pinky and uh, ring finger both on the 9th fret on the uh, E and G strings, to the 10th fret, ring finger back to the 9th fret. Same voicing, we're keeping that ring finger and pinky now on the 7th fret, really quickly sliding up and down. This, this really quick sliding up and down, resolving to the index finger on the 5th fret on the high E string. And then a full triad, like you would play a B minor chord. Ring finger, 4th fret, pinky 4th fret on the D and G string. Middle finger, 3rd fret on the B string, sliding up 2 frets. And sliding straight back down. Open E string, and then to close it off, an A chord with an added ninth. Now for those of you who are not into all of these Tommy Emanuel fireworks and just want to play the ballad, you can end it as well. And then just leave everything out and play, play that A at the ninth chord right away. That's a possibility as well. The whole ending really slowly. There you are, the whole of Stay Close To Me. A beautiful tune. You can sort of pick and choose how difficult you want to make this. If you want to keep it simple, then leave out all the embellishments, all the frilly stuff, and just play the melody, plain and simple. It will still sound beautiful. If you're up for a bit more of a challenge, then try to add in as much as possible. And above all, play around with this. Don't feel obligated to play this the same way every time uh, you play it through, because Tommy doesn't either. He changes this Every, every single time or on every single live version you can find. As always, enjoy the tune, have fun while practicing and see you next time for more Tommy Emanuel stuff. Bye bye.